All right, today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about, I got two new kits on my website that I wanna show you a little bit about rigging. And then later on in a different video, we'll do some fishing with these baits. But I've got two new kits on my website that I wanna show you guys, I think you're gonna catch a lot of fish on. These are actually baits in these kits that I use, that I personally use, colors that I use, uh, plastics that I actually use and catch fish on. So just wanted to share them with you. And even though, these two kits that I have are labeled drop shot kit and these three baits right here is labeled for top water kit. I want to show you how interchangeable these plastics are. So when you get these three plastics in your kit, when you get a finesse worms, streaks 375 and the trick shots, I want you to know that these baits are not just for drop shotting. This is called my drop shot kit. Finesse worms, streaks 375, and the trick shots. You can use these baits for different things, even though it's labeled only for drop shotting. With my top order kit, you get the Senate jerk shads, you get the hard leg frogs, and you also get the grass kickers. Even though it's a top order kit, it's not just for using as a top order. I'm gonna show you how you can rig it. Rigging is everything with these baits. So what I got here, Let's start with the drop shot kit. You know, this bait right here is probably one of the baits that I first grabbed when I tie on a drop shot, the three streaks 375. Well, why do I like to grab this one? Let me just pull one out of the pack and I'll tell you why I grab this one most of the time. Because you know, where I live, fish are a lot of times feeding on thread fin shad. And dude, that's just a thread fin shad in a on paper bag is what that is. I guess the bag's actually plastic, but you know what I'm saying. This just, that's what it is. It's just a little morsel, a little snack, a little cheese it It's a little Fig Newton. It's a little Oreo cookie of a minnow. That's all it is. It's just a little thread thin shad. And it's very subtle. Doesn't have a, you know, like a really overwhelming action. This bait right here, this is the juice. This is Ralph Shad. This is one of my favorite colors to use because it's just a good color. I mean, it's just a good color. Gray belly, blue back, and it's got like this blue and green flake in it. But of course, you guys that don't know what a drop shot is, let me show you. There's a couple of different ways to rig it. You know, forge your sinker. Here's a little bell, bell style sinker. Don't get, don't overthink the sinker part. Get you a drop shot weight and go to the house and and tie it on you know some people say bell shape some people say cylinder some people say round look dude you need something to get it to the bottom okay don't overthink the sinker part the thing that you do want to put a lot of thought in is your hook size when you're talking about especially a smaller bait like this and i'm going to be honest i don't have my boat right now and this is not actually the size hook that i would normally use with this and i didn't pair any hooks with this drop shot kit because there's so many different ways and so many different scenarios to use all three of these baits there's no way that i can make an affordable kit and have every hook that you would need to use it the way that i use it but just in the context of using the Streets 375 as a drop shot bait. I've got two deals here. There they are. That's all you need is a three eighths, um, anywhere from a, a quarter to three eighths. You can use a three sixteenth. I use three sixteenth ounce drop shot weight, and I prefer a number one hook. This is actually a one alt, which is a little bit bigger, but I would prefer in this smaller bait a number one hook. And with the last tech, this is very important. When you're rigging your drop shot, obviously you're gonna tie a polymer knot. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of detail of how to actually tie a drop shot at this point. You know, a lot of people ask about leader length and so forth when you're talking about drop shots. For me, if I'm casting my drop shot, I'm probably gonna go a little bit shorter, something less than, you know, 12, 14 inches. When I'm, um, when I'm vertical fishing, I'll go a little bit longer sometimes. Um, just depending on how the fish are acting and, and so forth. When it's cold, I shorten it up. When it's warm in the summertime and fish are acting a little funky, I'll give it a little bit more leader, leader length on it. Um, keeping that short when I'm casting just allows me to have more control. There's times when I'm casting and I make it longer. Obviously, when you cast and you make it out, that, that bait's actually at an angle when it's on the bottom. We all know that the purpose of a drop shot is to get your bait up off the bottom so you, you know your sinker 
The sinker is going to be on the bottom and your bait suspended up above it. That's the whole magic of the drop shot. So it makes your bait fall and act in the water a lot more natural. Okay, really simple. I'm going to tie that on with a Palomar knot, pop the knot back through, run the line through, tie it down here, tie your weight on, and you're going to have a drop shot rig, right? Well, here's the thing. When you're rigging it, there's a couple different ways to rig your Streaks 375. Now, 99.9 10 two tenths of a second of a of the time I'm going to be rigging it right here just nose hooked and with with the last take I know you guys know there's just a couple different ways some people you know you can rig it where you just poke it right through but never really expose the hook point like that with the last take you probably don't need to do that okay just know you don't need to do it that's all you need to know go ahead and poke it right through just like that just like a piece of paper just give it a nice little piercing there and that's the way I like to rig my streaks 375 and just use somewhere between 316th and 38th sinker and just go catch some fish on it. Now, one of the things that you also can use the three streaks 375 for is what I call the Ned Mickey. Joe Nania is one that's kind of nicknamed it the Ned Mickey. But you know, Ned rigging is just the juice, right? That's just what everybody's fishing. It's hot right now. I love it. You love it. Everybody loves it. Oprah Winfrey loves the Ned Rig. She did a, a three-part documentary on Ned Rigs, and this is how you rig the Ned Mickey on a Ned Rig. You're just going to take your Ned head. Typically, typically when you're talking about Ned Rigs, I don't like to use anything bigger than one-tenth ounce, pretty much, for any circumstance. I'm going to use somewhere between a one-twentieth ounce and a one-tenth. Um, one fifteenth, if you had to get one, one tenth or one fifteenth is probably going to be one of the ones you want to get. Now, uh, the Ned Mickey, I'll take this Streaks 375 and just rig it up like that. A hook exposed. You see how I did that? I didn't really talk you through how I rigged it up, but you know, you can measure this guy up. You can see about where you need to poke that hook through like that. Just hold it right there. You can see it's going to need to come out of the plastic right about there. So. What I do is just hold it in there, run your hook through when you get to about where your thumb is, then poke your hook out. Really important with elastic. You see guys have seen me do it. Pick it up like a little three-year-old that's acting a monkey in the house. Pick him up by the shoulder, collar, pull it up and over the, the keeper, and it'll stay there. The plastic will never come down. I'm not going to say it'll never come down, but if you put a shot of super glue on that right there, donezo, dude. It's over with. So the Ned Mickey. We got the drop shot. So the other way to rig this guy is to actually do a Nico on him. You say, well, Brian, what the hell are you talking about? Who Nico rigs mental style baits? Well, I do. What I like about that, dude, you got a really unique fall on this guy. When you Nico rig this thing like that, what I love about Elastic is I don't need a O-ring. I can throw this guy on anything and not need an O-ring. Um, Nico weights. For this guy, just poke him right here in the nose. Again, I don't have my boat, so I actually don't have my Nico weights here. But you just poke that guy in the nose, put your little Nico weights in the in the in the head of it here, and um, you know it falls much differently because you have the anchor point in the center of the bait, and then you have the weight here. So when it falls, it really has a spiraling fall as it falls, and then when you impart action on it, of course. It's just it's just different. It really mimics a dying little minnow very drastically. Is that right? Mimics a minnow drastically. Anyway, there's three ways you can rig it right there. I could I could sit here and probably talk for 20 minutes on on how you can rig the streets 375 because it's just one of my favorite baits. So now, second bait in my drop shot kit. Dude, you know, this is <laughs> Listen, if you're going to just give me like one bait and you just tell me, look, Brian, you get one bait, get out of my face and go fishing. Dude, this is just going to be a straight tail worm like this. I mean, that's just what it's going to be. But I can rig this guy just all over the place when it comes to rigging. Of course, we can do it drop shot. But here's the, here's the thing. My favorite way to fish this guy is just going to be the wacky drop shot. What is the wacky drop shot? You're going to take, you're going to take your... Uh, Soft plastic here, you're just gonna hook it in the middle right there. And you're gonna tie it to a drop shot. 
Now, when you rig when you rig that finesse worms this way, you get a totally different action out of it. This is going to be just a Texas rig drop, drop shot. Everybody knows how to do the Texas rig. You got your soft plastic here. You're going to go and rig it in about an eighth of an inch into the plastic, turn it back out. Before you get to the barbs, flip your hook over before you get to the barbs, and then just boom, right there. Embed your hook into the plastic. What do I like about the Texas rig drop shot? When I'm fishing over brush piles, I can flip it around docks. I can flip it around structure, wood, grass, et cetera, et cetera, not get it hung, but still have my bait suspended over the top of the bottom, the grass, the snot on the bottom of the grip, on the bottom of rocks and so forth, so it doesn't get hung as much. And it falls much quicker. How you rig your plastics determines the fall rate. And when it's rigged Texas style, it's much more streamlined. It falls to the bottom faster. And some that, that's important because you can cover more water if you can get your bait down a lot faster. Now, the last bait in uh, last bait in my drop shot kit right here is this guy, the good old trick shots. And honestly, I would do this bait the same ways that I just told you. I would rig it on the Ned head, you could do it on a Ned head, even though it's a drop shot kit bait, it's designed for a drop shot and that's where it's used best, no doubt. See, perfect little juicy morsel of, or of uh, Ned rig bait here. Look that good there, rig it a little short. But this thing, this thing has so much action on it right there this color right here is called twilight you know if you throw in drop shot you got to have some version of pink in there and so this this color right here is called twilight so he's got the purple back and you got the pink belly on it just fish like pink for some reason it stands out on the bottom really well you can use this guy as a little ned rig style bait the one that i put in your kit here is the the uh, trick shots 3.5 they also make a 425 in this which is a bigger version of it but you can rig that guy on a ned head you also, the traditional drop shot style, just nose hooking him right there in the nose like that. It's another way to rig that guy. You're going to catch a lot of fish. Guarantee at the cup, I'm probably going to catch a couple on this. But it has a lot of action. One thing I like about the, the trick shots, you can see the body is ribbed here. So what that does is still lets you have that little bit of bulky profile around the belly. But with it's ribbed, there's less plastic there. So it just lets this bait really be more lifelike in the water. If that was just full on plastic right here, the bait would be a lot more rigid. But the fact that it's uh, kind of ribbed like that, there's less plastic there, so the bait's a lot more uh, a lot more realistic in the water. So don't forget the drop shot kit, four inch worms, minnow style baits, they all look very simple and plastic. But remember, it's all about rigging. The way you rig these baits, determine how they react in the water what they look like what they're going to do and and how you can catch fish on them and in the structure you can fish them around here we go we got the top order kit as well the top order kit i got three baits in here this is my three favorite baits that i use i'm really going to blow your scalp off with this one though um this these baits are all meant to be top water baits or that or, you know a suggestion of top water shall i say I've got the grass kickers in there, which is a five inch swim bait. That's what this bait is right here, the grass kickers. I've got the hard legs frogs, mud minnow, red bone, which is like a pearl with a watermelon back on it. And also one of the best style baits. You're gonna see almost a mirror image of a drop shot kit. Boom, streaks. Uh, this is the jerk shads, the Senate jerk shads actually and smoky shad so this is this this kit i'm going to really blow your wig off here because you're going to think i'm like totally repeating myself from talking about the drop shot kit here so let's start let's start with the one that everybody loves everybody likes talking about frog fishing i don't know every every bass fisherman i know has an obsession with frog fishing so and i'm probably not really any different on that so what i've got here this is a flashy swimmer believe it or not this is a five alt flashy swimmer you see this hook just pairs up really well with that plastic there. Uh, but what I'm actually gonna do with the flashy swimmer here is uh, actually I need, I like to take off, 
I like to take off the screw lock keeper. You know, a lot of people say you can't use a screw lock on elastic. You really kind of can. It's just not that easy to uh, to put a screw lock on elastic. What you have to do is just poke a hole with a hook or a nail or something in there, and then you can screw screw it in the into your plastic. There's a little dot of super glue on the uh, screw lock, and then once you screw it down in your plastic, that bad boy is never coming out of there. So the way I think it's best, you see, I've taken my flashy swimmer, and I've taken the screw lock off of it. Then I take a piece of fishing line. It doesn't matter what kind of fishing line, mono, floor, carbon, braid, 10, 12, 8. That's not important. You'll see why next. So, guys, in this comment section, don't ask what kind of line. That's not important. You take your line. You're going to run it. You can take your line. It's tied onto a, a spare hook here. This will be the main line. This will be going to your reel here. And you're just going to run it to the plastic through like this right here. All right. Just run it. And you're just going to pull that line out of the plastic. Okay. And what you want to do is take off that spare hook. Just cut that guy off. So now what you've done, all you've really done is you have fed that, that hook, that line through your plastic here. You know, it's elastic. So you can see that that's, that's not going to break. Okay. So then you take your flashy swimmer, get your flashy swimmer, and you tie your flashy swimmer on, whatever kind of hook you're going to use to tie your flashy swimmer on, with your main line. I'll just use a towel. All right. So when you get through, basically you just got your, your hook just dangling off. You got your hook just dangling off the line there, your main line going to your reel. What you do, is put that in there, and then run the eye of the hook back through where the, uh, back through where the plastic is. The, the line ran through the plastic. Okay, and then just rig your plastic there. And you see that weight on the flashy swimmer actually acts like a keeper for the elastic, so it won't slide down. Now, my friends, what you got? Now, this only works. This works best in like open water frogging, not when you've got submerged grass and pad. You know, if you're fishing around pads, actually pretty good. But you can see. Now, not only do you have a frog, you've got a little weight on your flashy swimmer that helps keep that, that frog killed. And then you also got some flashy, hence flashy swimmer, that's up under your frog. And you can buzz that guy across the top, across the top of the surface. And dude, that, that's just something a little different that they don't see. Also, of course, Z-Man makes the TRD spins that you can put in this guy and get the same action. But that right there is something that that's that's a unique way to rig the hard leads frog is with the spinner with the flashy swimmer on the back. So check that guy out, man. That that's a smoking setup right there. I've caught a lot of fish fishing around here around some of the ponds, and in the fall when they just don't really want to bite anything, that's a good guy you can cover a lot of water with because you can just throw it out really really fast as you can and just come back to the boat with it. So let's look at the grass kickers. The, the grass kickers is a great swim bait. You guys, you can rig it up on the flashy swimmer as well. You can rig it just on the big EWG here. You see, I've got a big, this is actually an 11 alt. Dude, did you even know they made an 11 alt hook? <laughs> it's an 11 alt hook. You know, if when you're fishing, especially down like around Okeechobee, a lot of times when the fish are spawning and a lot of that, that hay grass down in Okeechobee, you know, they're real bad about biting the tail and not really getting the bait that good. Well, you got a hook that goes almost all the way to the back. Now, for traditionally rigging the grass kickers, I'm not going to use an 11-alt hook, but this is, I just wanted to show you guys my, 
you can see that that's a gaff right there dude you can you can rig it all the way to the back but the thing i like about this big hook that you're probably not thinking about is it's heavy so it lets me cast this bait like a long long way you can cast it really really far back into the grass and that's really important when you're throwing a bait like that but you know just rigging that guy up just the classic texas rig tech spose reeling it across the surface fast as you can but here's the kicker here's the kicker here's the kicker get your punter get your field goal guy let me get over here and grab a, a, a scatter bait uh here's the kicker right here you can see i've got an old chatter bait here skirts going on here this is one of the ways i like to throw a chatterbait anyway is a skirtless chatterbait you guys have seen it in some of my videos before but that grass kickers is a heck of a chatterbait trailer spinnerbait trailer swim jig trailer it's big it's got a lot of meat on it just gives those fish something to hang on to but this right here is also a great way to fish the good old you can put this guy on like a like a like a blade runner is what we call it but the old underspin you can put it on the underspin too but you can see great chatterbait trailer or just a chatterbait body as well the grass kickers what i like about putting it this is a different profile when you throw a chatterbait without the skirt something they don't see as often it's a little bit more erratic so when you go to pump it out of grass it's really burst out of the grass really erratically so that's why i like to throw it on a chatterbait like that so it's a top water kit but chatterbait kit and it's also a great place to show off your really ginormous hooks that you get from owner last but not least probably you know i love minnow style baits and everybody over the years you've caught a bunch of fish on fluke style baits i mean it's just fluke style bait. They catch fish, right? Well, here we go. The Senate jerk chads. Let me go back. Go back to the drop shot kit. This is one of the baddest drop shot baits in the world, when you, especially when you're talking about catching smallmouth. So come over here to the drop shot kit, and you can also rig the jerk chads on the drop shot, Nico, all the stuff that we talked about doing over here in the drop shot kit, you can do in the top water kit with the jerk chads but you know we fish a lot of top water in the summertime spring and summertime and we like to move our baits extremely fast and one thing that we catch a lot of our schooling fish on when you're fishing for fish that are schooling feeding on shad is a mental style bait jerked across the surface as fast as you can reel it and of course you know you usually do this weightless but one of the drawbacks of throwing it weightless is you can't really throw it that far. And of course, when fish are schooling, you need to get that bait way out there. Well, they've got the new snake locks from Z-Man. These come in a bunch of different weights. What I like about it is they have some weights that are really have a big hook, but a really light weight. So this is just a little quarter ounce size. And like I said, the traditional way would just be throw it weightless on like a five alt offset or EWG hook. What I like about this right here is I can sling this dude a mile. This is just a quarter ounce snake locks with a four or five volt hook in it. And I'll, what I usually do is I rig it and just go ahead and pop the, the hook all the way through like that. So, you know, if he decides to get it, got him. And I throw this guy, you'd be surprised at action this guy. You throw it out there as far as you can and just, just jerk it just like you would a weightless one. And it's just snakes back and forth. Great way to catch school and fish on this guy right here the snake locks you can get them they come about three in a pack three or four in a pack this one is a quarter ounce with a five out hook but you can adjust your weight size you can throw as late as light as an eighth ounce weight on this guy but you can see the weight the hook is free swings free so you're not going to lose as many fish on it but the good old jerk shads rigged on the snake locks Cast it further, erratic action it's got that shad profile especially if you're in a blueback heron lake this dude right here is just straight up the juice game changer.